What's going on, Paisanos? V here, and I want to talk about the recent Pokemon Regionals I went to. This was my first Pokemon Regionals, and Pokemon Regionals is basically a Yu-Gi-Oh! YCS. Pretty cool event, absolutely massive, and there are a lot of differences in a Pokemon Regionals as opposed to a Yu-Gi-Oh! YCS. And in this video, I wanted to go over that. I want to talk about what made this Pokemon Regionals so special and different and the things I didn't like from this regionals. And is the Pokemon Regionals better than a Yu-Gi-Oh! YCS? That's the question I'm answering in this video. Guys, new channel, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button, and comment down below. When I first started this Pokemon event, I did not realize how massive it was going to be. This was actually the biggest Pokemon Regionals ever. <laughs> With over 2,200 players competing in the Master Division, and then the other divisions, seniors and juniors, it made up well over 20. 700 players registered for this event not to mention everybody that signed up with the spectator pass most likely parents to come to this event but here's the crazy part though there was room there's a lot of room there was a ton of room for people to walk around there was a ton of room for people to go to the vendors and to be honest with you i don't know if it was just this special event or it was just basically how pokemon ran their ran the tables but this pokemon event was definitely bigger than a Yu-Gi-Oh ycs but somehow more spacious than a Yu-Gi-Oh! YCS. Let's start in the beginning. I got up and there was a snowstorm. A big snowstorm. It was absolutely massive. There was snow everywhere. I had to get outside and actually get the snow off my car, go back inside and grab all my bags and everything and start getting ready to pack the car up. But then we start going ahead and start making our way over to North Carolina where the Pokemon Regionals is. And the weather gets good. For the most part, by the time I'm in North Carolina, there's almost no snow on the ground. The only snow is on my car. With that said, uh, I get to the hotel and I drop all my bags off. And then we shoot out and we go ahead and register for the Pokemon event. And the first thing I noticed immediately was how nice everybody was at this event. Going ahead and registering for this event, everyone was nice. Looking at the judges, they were all nice. Even day one, while we were in line waiting, the judges were super cool and nice. And in a Yu-Gi-Oh event, it's the opposite. It's only, the only thing I can say, it's akin to waiting at a DMV when you're at a Yu-Gi-Oh event. Whereas Pokemon, the judges, the people working there, they're all excited to be there. And they were super nice to everyone. And I mean everyone at the event. Even the judges, when they approached me to talk about shuffling, they were really nice about it. They weren't aggressive. They weren't in your face. They were just like, hey, listen, we run the things this way. You got to do this, that. And then one of the judges actually shuffled my deck. Shuffling a Pokemon also is vastly different than shuffling in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, vastly different. And I didn't know that. I didn't know how to do a Pokemon shuffle because I'm used to a 40-card Yu-Gi-Oh deck shuffle. And since Yu-Gi-Oh deck has the smaller Japanese cards, we just basically do a couple of shuffles, give a couple of cuts, hand it to our opponent. And Pokemon... It's a whole different system. Here is a Pokemon deck. Here's a 40 card double sleeve Yu-Gi-Oh deck. And here is a regular 40 card Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Now, even if you use a 40 card double sleeve Yu-Gi-Oh deck, your shuffling is still gonna be drastically different than Pokemon shuffling. So I'll show you how to shuffle with a regular 40 card deck. It's the same as everything else. Do this, do this. Once again, nice and simple. Cut. 40 card double sleeve Yu-Gi-Oh deck, same thing. Bunch of riffles. And of course it takes a couple of seconds. Bunch of riffles. Some of these. Some more riffles. And then you present the deck for a cut or shuffle, or whatever. In a Pokemon deck, it is completely different. So depending on how you want to do it, there's two ways to do it. Um, th the first way is Take your deck and kind of go over it lightly like this. You need to do this a bunch of times. And this takes a while to do. Especially if you're starting a game off, you need to do about seven of these. Seven of these. Now, I kind of did this as well, and I was told that I wasn't shuffling enough. So, I could be doing this incorrectly. I just want to throw that out there for the video. But, one thing that you can do that they do a lot in Pokemon is take off your deck and pile it. Shuffle. And do it again. And of course, in the beginning of the game, you're doing about seven of these as well. So you're doing a bunch of this. The problem with this one is it hurts your wrist. My wrist was killing me doing it this way. The other way of doing it like this, like a regular Yu-Gi-Oh deck, 
allegedly there's a problem with it you need to do a bunch of it or i i don't know i do it like a Yu-Gi-Oh player and i get called out by i was called out on day two by a pokemon judge and then 15 minutes later another judge came to me after doing it after doing more shuffles said i have to do even more shuffles so I, I i'm still learning how to do the pokemon shuffle but basically if you do this you about do about five of these after you look through your deck whereas in Yu -Gi -Oh, this is good. This is good. You're good to go with this. It's just a massive difference. And I really wish Pokemon was a lot more clear to the players about shuffling. Because I find there's no real issue with doing it like this. I, I think that doing it like this is perfectly fine. But depending who you ask in Pokemon, some will say yes. Some will also say no. Uh, another thing that it was a recurring theme for me throughout the weekend was I'm left-handed. So this is my left hand. I'm left-handed. So everything else being shown to me about how to cut and shuffle was done via the right hand. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't shuffle and cut utilizing my right hand predominantly. I have to utilize my left hand. Now you probably say, V, go ahead and swap it, you know, sw switch the other way they do it. The problem is it doesn't really work that way for me. I, I kept trying, it just didn't work throughout day two. Day one, nobody really cared. Day one, I was doing it like this all day long, no big deal. Once again, just passed by, just watch, nothing. Day two, they had a problem with it. I don't know why. I really have zero idea. This, by the way, is once again, not good enough, as, as well I was told. Day two, I kept doing this, and within about three rounds, my wrist was shot. I was not doing that again. I'd rather get DQ'd than do that anymore, period. I was just, and I was kind of, I was kind of getting pissed because I wanted to do the right thing. I just didn't know how to do it, and that was very frustrating. But I'm playing in day two, and if had I won more, won more games, I would have actually done a lot better in the event, maybe even making it way up to top eight. But this was on my mind the entire time, so unfortunately that didn't happen. Also, my wrist was killing me, and at that point, I just wanted to leave the event. Uh, and it had nothing to do with anybody, it had just had to do with me not doing the shuffle correctly, because I didn't know that was such a huge part of it, but evidently it was. Something I wish Pokemon can allow for their players is things like this. In Yu-Gi-Oh, these are not needed, but in Pokemon, evidently, shuffling is such an issue that these might actually be useful. And I really don't know if these are legal or not in Pokemon, but I really wish they were. Because if I could use this rather than shuffling every two seconds, I'd easily do that, number one. Number two, the majority of my time, and the reason why I had so many ties was because me and my opponent was both shuffling. Where Yu-Gi-Oh! the time rule is an issue. Pokemon, they have a massive, massive, absolutely monumental shuffling issue. Where the minute someone goes in their deck, if not going back in, you have to shuffle, and you have to shuffle a lot, and that absorbs a lot of your time. So even though we had 50 minutes and we did have turns in Pokemon, the majority of that time was us shuffling through our decks. And if we could have used something like this, this would dramatically cut down the time in shuffling, and I would actually be able to complete a majority of my games, and my wrists would not be hurting me so much. Another thing in Pokemon is positioning of your deck. So Pokemon players have to position a deck like this. You cannot have your deck ever like this. You, you just can't. If your deck's like this, they're going to tell you, put your deck back like that. So once again, that's how your deck is, not like this, okay? In Yu-Gi-Oh, technically you're supposed to have your deck like this, but nobody really cares. You can have it like this, you can have it like this. Nobody cares whatsoever. And for most players, the deck normally goes like this. That's how it is for most Yu-Gi-Oh players. We, we grab from our deck, call it a day. Simple and easy, no big deal. And same thing in Pokemon, by the way. You, I could, you could do the same thing. I grab from my deck. Once again, no big deal. Nice and easy. But I was told that the reason why Pokemon does not allow players to have that kind of side because you could look at your cards if you haven't. So you could, you could kind of, I guess, look through your cards whenever you draw from your deck. It didn't really make much sense to me, to be honest with you. And the reason why it didn't make much sense to me because you could do the same thing by doing this. Like, you use more of your thumb. But I can tell that this is an energy because, you know, it's an energy. <laughs> I can tell that this is a stadium because... There's a stadium a text box right there. I can tell a lot about my next cards just by thumbing them. So, yes, drawing like this, sure, it makes, it makes, you know, drawing like this is something I think is helpful, but it's not really helpful. Also, if you draw from the side like this, like I was doing, which was not easy, by the way, you can still do the same thing. You can still thumb your cards and do the same exact thing. So that weird ruling where someone can cheat by thumbing their deck, it didn't make any sense to me because you can still do it. The reason why I have my deck at a side in both Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! is really simple. It's because I'm left-handed. <laughs> I'm left-handed and I don't write like this. I'm left-handed. 
and it's much easier for me to write like this than like this. So when I draw from my deck, it's easier for me to do it at a different angle because my hands are accustomed to doing things at different angles. And I've seen a lot of people who are right-handed who also write like this as well. So when they play the card game, any card game, they want to be able to draw at an angle because it's more comfortable to draw at an angle depending on how you write. I don't really have any science and no way to back this up at all other than the fact that I do write up to down, not left to right. I can write left to right, but it looks really bad. It looks like a child's writing, whereas up to down is just easier and more comfortable for me to write. So when I draw from my deck, it's much easier and comfortable for, for me to draw at an angle because that's how I'm accustomed to. One little thing I also found really funny is Pokemon players predominantly like to use black sleeves so they don't get fingernail dirt on them. Yu-Gi-Oh players predominantly like to use white sleeves and even though yes, these get dirtier faster, these just look infinitely better. So do you go by aesthetics or do you go by not getting dirt in your sleeves as fast? I don't know, to be honest with you, I kind of like both. I do like the white sleeves a lot more because it looks so clean when you have a nice deck in white sleeves. But in the black sleeves, just they look just, you know, they just look super dark. <laughs> um, but definitely, I, I definitely know why Pokemon players like to use the black sleeves. Those make sense. Also, we had to use dragon shields because Pokemon players use dragon shields. And these sleeves are absolute dog shit. These sleeves are trash. I hate these sleeves. These sleeves, infinitely better. Imperium Duelist, way, way, way better than these trash ass Pokemon dragon shields. And I didn't know this in the entire event. I am pretty sure I did shuffle incorrectly the entire event. But the judges were patient. They were coming up to me and going, well, we're now we're going to give you a game loss. They were cool about it. They said, hey, listen, we know you don't understand. You don't know. Because I, they knew. I told all well, the judges it was my first Pokemon regionals. So they kind of worked with me. And a couple of times, judges actually sat next to me and shuffled my deck and talked to me about how to do a proper shuffle. Something I really do appreciate. And things, small things like that is a lot to me as a player because... I want to make it sure they know I'm not cheating, and if they can help me do something better, I'm all about it. Yu-Gi-Oh judging? Well, Yu-Gi-Oh judges don't really look at the games. No, now, not all. There are good Yu-Gi-Oh judges, but I've been slow played in front of judges many a times. And at the, this Pokemon event, that's not going to fly. They will stop you on that. They watch all the tables, and it's really good and comforting to see that. In day two, they watch a little bit too much or a little bit too up your you know but it wasn't bad though still whereas you get like i said i've seen my opponent do some sketchy things in front of a judge and a judge just looks away and whistles that happens a ton in this game, and I really wish it didn't. I really wish Yu-Gi-Oh! can take a page out of Pokemon's book as far as judging and have these judges really focus on these games. So in slow playing, I really wish the judges were there to nip it in the butt immediately. Another thing I found really interesting is the side event prize wall. So for Yu-Gi-Oh! YCS events, the prize wall is basically deck boxes, Yu-Gi-Oh! -Oh! gear, dice, so your sleeves maybe it's not really that crazy the pokemon prize wall was insane they offered booster boxes of pokemon cards they offered stickers uh, uh dot stuffed animals all kinds of things were offered at this event in the prize wall the prize wall was absolutely massive and it was really easy for you to get tickets you can get side event tickets not just by actually competing inside events like playing the card game ball game in which you can get points and use those points to redeem at the prize at the prize wall and i use the word i use the term prize wall really loosely here because at this pokemon prize wall it was massive it was huge and when you compare the pokemon prize wall to the Yu-Gi-Oh prize wall it's downright embarrassing another thing i found really interesting is how the prize event entry is done for Yu-Gi-Oh side events the price of entry depends on the side event you're going to do some side events are $12, some side events are $20. For Pokemon, it's equals to tickets. So some side events cost one side event ticket, some might cost two side event tickets. Side event tickets have a flat rate of roughly around, I believe it was around $6, six and change. But you could buy as many side event tickets as you want and then use them. You go up to a place that's, you go up to someone that's running a side event, ask how many tickets it costs to run the event, two, three, four, whatever it is, hand them the tickets, and now you're entered to play. You give it to them and you're good to go and now you're starting your entered in simple and easy but effective that's what i've got that's kind of a recurring theme i saw i saw here at this event filming was really really cool because i could basically film everywhere whenever without any problems nobody was upset about getting filmed and pokemon actually had a banner in place to tell you hey listen you will be getting filmed if you walk around here you will be getting filmed at this event 
If your camera goes from this to this side of your event, that's a problem. That's a big problem. <laughs> you can be kicked out of an event which you drove six, seven, eight hours to because you may or may not be filming. If you're filming inside a Yu-Gi-Oh event, you will be getting trouble. You will get in a ton of trouble. Unless, of course, you're filming in a small little designated film area, which may or may not be by the bathroom, which may or may not smell like trash, which may or may not be smaller than the Pokemon prize wall we just showed you. Filming is absolutely atrocious in Yu-Gi-Oh! Konami series to get together. It's 2024. Everyone has a phone. Everyone can film. At least just put the signs in front saying the minute you enter this event, you will be filmed. It's not hard. It's an insult at this point. One of the biggest game changers at this entire event was VIP. The VIP experience is something I wish every card game offered. I would take it every time. I would buy a VIP season pass to any Yu-Gi-Oh event and any Pokemon event if they did it like this. The VIP package costs roughly around $300 with entry. And that's a lot of money, but is it though? You see, with VIP, you get a swag bag. And in that swag bag, you have roughly around $250 to $300 stuff that you can sell online. So once again, if you buy the VIP entry, you can sell the backpack, you can sell everything. And hold on a second. This is the backpack. This backpack is by OGIO. It's a really good brand. It's a really good gamer gaming backpack. It has a sweat resistance in the back, which is important. It has a side traps for drinks, really cool. It has multiple pockets, something that every card player will use. This is an excellent backpack. So you get a backpack, you get a pen, you get dice, you get a notepad and a thick notepad, you get a playmat, you get a shirt, you get the static seating we'll talk about in a second. You get a lot. And the coolest part about this is you can trade this stuff, sell this stuff, and that will knock down that $300 entry price. And I'm not joking when I say this. I will gladly pay $300 for this. Know that in my mind, it's well worth it. When I first saw the prior room, I didn't think it was really much. I, I was kind of taken back and said, this is what a VIP prior room is. But with that said, the prior room offered a couple of things I think that definitely make it worth it. The first thing is outlets. You can use a plug and plug in your devices and charge all your devices. Really cool, liked it a lot. I thought that was a really cool idea to have a bunch of outlets there that we can use in the VIP room, number one. Number two, well, I like the fact that you had Wi-Fi. And it was a VIP had access to Wi-Fi that they could use. And VIP Wi-Fi, pretty good throughout the event. So whenever a round came up, I can see my seat number, table, standings. I can look online. And I had no issues with internet, wi with Wi-Fi the entire time. It was good. It worked great. And it was only meant for VIP. So there weren't a lot of people bogging down the system. My favorite thing about the VIP experience is the VIP static seating. So when we go to a Yu-Gi-Oh event, you know you have to check your phone and see, all right, I'm at table seven, table 14, table 500, whatever table you're at. And then you have to run over to that table and sit down and play. And sometimes it can get really hard, especially if you don't have the VIP Wi-Fi and you have to compete your wife, you have to use your internet against everybody else. It gets slowed down. It takes you a while before you can get to your seat. I never had left my table all throughout day one. It was awesome. Everyone was really cool. Obviously, the other VIPs people. And little side note, by the way, I was the only person in VIP that made day two. Pretty cool. <laughs> but with that said, I would do VIP all over again easily. In sitting at my table, I saw the whole live stream sub that Pokemon is doing. They ran three live stream subs right in front of you. And on their channel, they had three live streams going at the same time. All in front of my face. Clear as day, Pokemon Go, Pokemon VGC, Pokemon TCG, live streams were happening as I was playing and I could look up and see the live streams because my VIP seat tables were moved right in front of the live stream. At Yu-Gi-Oh events, there's almost no children, which is a lot of, which is a massive concern if you're Konami because the future Yu-Gi-Oh players need to start playing Yu-Gi-Oh at a young age. You have to get them addicted early so they stay with you. But at Yu-Gi-Oh events, there's almost no children. Yu-Gi-Oh decks are really hard and complicated, so the kids don't really want to play. And Konami does have a way to get newer players into the game. At this event, Pokemon had a way for all new players, and they were teaching new players at the regionals. So at this event, Pokemon was teaching new players all over the place. They had an actual huge setup, and it was meant only for newer players to enter and play. 
And it was a really cool experience for a new player because you have someone that works there. They're going to walk up to you and they're going to walk you around. Say, these, grab your energies, grab your Pokemon trainers, grab your Pokemon, and let's sit down and let's build a deck together and let's talk about this deck. And you can keep the deck. It's yours. Free. All free. It doesn't cost you anything. That whole thing is free. And it's meant there for you. Whereas Yu-Gi-Oh, if you're a new player, you better learn quick or you're drowning. <laughs> But going back to all the children players, I really found it amazing because Pokemon is going to be around for future generations, the card game at the very least, because of so many younger players. So many systems are put in place for younger players to thrive in Pokemon, where Yu-Gi-Oh, if you're a younger player, all you are is an easy target, unless you're really gifted. And even then, you're still an easy target to a lot of these Yu-Gi-Oh players, because even if you are really gifted, they probably spend a lot of money in their deck and practice a lot more than you because you had to go Shishi. <laughs> Will I go back to a Pokemon Regionals? Absolutely. In fact, Pokemon's going to be having a Regionals coming up in about two weeks in Tennessee. I didn't sign up for the VIP experience, but I'm definitely looking forward to going back and playing in another Pokemon Regionals. Is Pokemon a better card game than Yu-Gi-Oh? No. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh is still an infinitely better card game. I love playing Yu-Gi-Oh way more than I love playing Pokemon. That is a fact. The card game of Yu-Gi-Oh is just better than Pokemon. But everything else Pokemon offers blows Yu-Gi-Oh out the water. It's not even a fair comparison. And I hopefully and truly wish Konami can do some research into what makes their Pokemon regional so good and why Pokemon is breaking records. Just like we saw the last regionals. They broke their record for attendance. People left out of a snowstorm to play and broke the record. Well, the other people were in that building for Pokemon. And they're looking to break records moving forward. Pokemon's is a better player experience. Despite the fact that yu gi is a better trading card game itself, Pokemon just runs everything better. They give obviously better prize support. $5,000 was won, by the way, by the guy who won the event. Uh, and that's only for the Masters of Vision. Side events are way better, way bigger. The VIP experience, I would gladly pay $300 every single time and i didn't wasn't the only person that paid 300 dollars. there was well over 40 tables meaning 80 people that paid 300 dollars for the vip experience i do it i wish i offered a season pass i'd be into that and of course these events also entice younger players by providing areas for younger players by providing areas for newer players by selling to not only older players but younger players within not just uh, Pokemon cards but Pokemon accessories, Pokemon dolls, Pokemon shirts, backpacks. You guys are starting to do this by the way, but they're nowhere near the same level as Pokemon. Guys, if you really like this video, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe button, and comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. Like I said, I'm not quitting Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is still my number one game. It's still my favorite game. But playing over at the Pokemon Regionals, we definitely have a lot that we need to improve on. And when I mean we, I mean not you and me, the players. I mean the Royal We. You know, Konami. Or how people are really saying their name, Komani. Anyway, I'll see your boy V. And you guys have a great day.